Hey guys, welcome to Max Tech, and as you know, we've been testing out Samsung's brand new Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra, which is a massive beast of a tablet, and a lot of you guys were asking us about the gaming performance and FPS, so that is exactly what we're going to figure out in this video, comparing it to the 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro. So I'm going to run a bunch of games and test out the FPS on both the iPad and the new Tab S8 Ultra and give you guys my thoughts on the general experience of gaming and the FPS, latency, different stuff like that. And to do that, I have a MacBook right here with PerfDog preloaded. As you can see, this basically gives you real-time data on the FPS and a bunch of different metrics. It gives you a full report, so I'm going to use that to see which iPad is basically the best gaming tablet in 2022. Let's jump right into it. For now, let's put the iPad Pro over to the side, grab the crazy large Tab S8 Ultra, and the first thing I am noticing so far is that you are getting like some weird anti-aliasing glitchy lines and stuff on here. And I think it's because this is such a massive display and some Android games and apps aren't that well optimized with the aspect ratio. But let's go ahead and get into the graphic settings. As you can see, I have it fully maxed out, very high and max. I've turned on anti-aliasing and some of these extra features. Let's just turn all of those on right there. And for multiplayer, let's turn those on. Bloom, everything, there you go. And let's go ahead and jump into a game. And now that we're in, I'm gonna hit record FPS right here and we should be tracking just fine. First things first, this is a heavy tablet. It's just so massive, it's kind of hard to hold. So you probably wanna grab a controller if you're actually planning on gaming with this. And because the display is so huge, the graphics quality is pretty terrible. Like, oh, it's not good. I don't know if this app is like completely not optimized for tablets, which the nice thing about the iPads is that they are fully optimized as iPad apps. So far, FPS is looking good. We do see some minor dips right there, but pretty solid. Everything feels smooth here too, so no issues. Man, it's just hard to like hold this, control this thing. All right. Oh, dude, you gotta stretch your entire hand, man. If you got small hands, <laughs> don't play like this. Okay, we won. Let's see, four and a half minutes, yeah. No issues with COD. Oh, it looks like it goes down to 30 in the menus, so it did kind of mess at the end. All right, so because this was so easy, we're just gonna leave it at that one match. It was able to handle 60 FPS just fine, so let's move over to the iPad Pro and see how that performs. And here we are on the iPad Pro, and it instantly feels smaller and lighter, easier to control and use. So let's go ahead and check out those graphics settings. Let's see, so it lets you do ultra, interestingly. So let's try that out. Let's try the ultra quality. And for some reason, it doesn't let me turn any of this other stuff on. So I'm just gonna turn on everything that I can. Ultra, multiplayer only, it looks like. So let's test that out and get into a game. Whoa, speakers. I noticed the speakers are like boomier a little bit, bassier, that's what I like about the iPad Pro. All right, and here we go. Now that we're in a game, I've started the recording. Look at that, 120 FPS, guys. That is what I like to see. Ooh, that's smooth. Oh, I instantly feel that 120. Super, super smooth compared to the uh, tab. Oh, it almost like gives you a competitive advantage. Plus it's easier to control, but man, this is smooth. Looking at it, it's going down a little bit, but it's staying like above 100. I'd be happy as long as it stays over 60, better than the tab, but man, it's nice that this actually supports 120 FPS. Man, this looks good, sounds good, speakers are great. The quality isn't super good, but I'm definitely not noticing aliasing like I was. Oh, but the difference is going to 120 FPS, I mean, that by itself. And the weird thing is the tab said like max frame rate, like it seems like it should be a lot. It supports 120, but only on the iPad Pro are you getting this. Woo! Come on, fire! Oh, please, 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 please. Oh, come on. The iPad Pro wins easily for COD Mobile, just because you can't get 120 FPS on that tab. And now before we move on to the next game, let's actually look over here to the Perf Dog statistics and analytics of both games 
So right here, first of all, we have the Tab S8 Ultra. So it looks like an average of 58 FPS, and that's because it included a little bit at the end where it got out of the game to the lobby. So basically perfect 60 FPS. And in terms of the CPU usage, it's still pretty low, only 20% average usage. So no big deal there. And now moving over to the iPad Pro, 116.8 FPS also including at the end right there, you see a huge drop off going down to 30, but man, very smooth and consistent 120 FPS, which is very impressive. And the CPU usage, whoa, only 9% to get 120 FPS. That's really impressive. So definitely for COD Mobile, the iPad Pro wins and let's move on to the next game. Before I go ahead and jump into Pokemon Unite, I did notice in my top camera that you could see these lines kind of flowing down the display, and that's because of the PWM flicker rate that controls the OLED brightness, and a lot of people have been complaining about this because it hurts some people's eyes, whoever is sensitive to it. Now, I am not, but this could bug you, which I don't think the iPad Pro has this issue, because it's mini LED instead of OLED. Now, unfortunately, it made me do the tutorial, which sucks, but at least we can get a good idea of the performance. Actually, let's go into here, Got the frame rate at high, brightness recommended, so we got everything under control. And now let's test out the uh, FPS. So far it looks like we're getting perfect 60 FPS, just like before. Give us the goals, man. Give us the goals. All right, and there you go, we have finished. Let's stop that recording. And perfect 60 FPS, no issues at all. And I'd say the controls are better in Pokemon Unite, and yeah, I think the graphics are optimized, they look a lot better too. And now on the iPad Pro, you can see we don't have those lines, and we actually have a lot more settings here. We have frame rate high, graphics quality highest. For some reason, we didn't have those on the Tab S8, but it's all turned up to the max, so let's go ahead and get into a match. All right, now that we're in, let's go ahead, screen record, let's start that. For some reason, it shows that we're at 60 FPS, but over here in my system it says 120, which is interesting. Oh, what? Okay, so it's weird, it's recording as 120 FPS, but this only shows 60, so I wonder what's going on. I mean, looking at the animations, they seem very quick. Definitely no issues at all. Oh, he just deleted me. <laughs> Are you serious? Okay, I'm gonna look very closely to see if I can tell if it's 120 or not. All right, so I'm moving back and forth, and it's definitely super smooth, but I don't know if it's actually 120 FPS. I think it actually is capping it at 60 for some reason, which is weird, but it's definitely incredibly smooth. So I'd say between both the iPad and the Tab S8 Plus, if this is in fact capped to 60, then the gameplay experience is basically the same, except it's a little bit more immersive on the Tab S8, Ultra, but it is a little bit harder to control. And now comparing the actual stats between the two, here we have the Tab S8 Ultra, which shows 59.1 FPS compared to 118, but that's actually not true. I think it was capped at 60. It was incredibly smooth, but I think it was capped at 60. Let's compare the CPU usage. 5.6% CPU usage on the iPad Pro compared to average of 13%. So that's very interesting. And now before we get into Genshin Impact, I do want to play Wild Rift and man, I can feel how much heavier this thing is compared to the iPad Pro. And one thing I really don't like is that when you're holding this thing, man, you block the speaker grills right here and right here because you're just trying to hold all that weight. So like the volume gets cut in half it's a little bit annoying. Now in the graphics settings, unfortunately I went to custom and it does not let you do 90 or 120 FPS. That really sucks, so we're gonna keep it at 60 and just have super high graphics quality. Let's change the effects to high as well and make sure all this stuff is set high. Let's go ahead and play some Aram. 
And now this is a huge difference. This game looks like it's actually optimized for this large display. And I've got to say, this looks amazing compared to COD Mobile, which looked terrible on this large over 14 inch display. So I'm happy about this. Now that we're in the game, let's go ahead and start it. We're looking at 60 FPS even. So graphics quality definitely looks great. Man, you definitely get tired holding this thing. It's just so huge, but perfect 60 right here. This game's very well optimized. Boom. Boom! So far, so good. I haven't seen it drop from 60. No issues. As, as you'd expect, I mean, this is an expensive tablet, that's for sure, but man, I love this massive display. Everything looks so good, so bright, even though the actual maximum brightness isn't nowhere as near as the iPad Pro with that mini LED, it's still bright enough for gaming. So far, League of Legends Wild Rift, excellent gaming experience on this thing. Absolutely excellent. Guys, I think we won the game. Yeah, we actually won, <laughs> that was so crazy. Good job, dudes. Yes, we did it. There you go, let me pause that right there. Stop recording. That was an awesome experience on this thing. This display is so massive and I love how League is actually optimized. Everything looks good. There's no anti-aliasing issues. Like, look at that. That looks amazing. Now back on the M1 iPad Pro, in the graphics settings of Wild Rift, yes, you get 120 FPS as an option. This is what you want in a competitive game like League of Legends Wild Rift, so it doesn't let you turn the graphics quality as high, but 120 FPS is more important and the resolution is at high as well. So let's go ahead and jump into a match. And I am noticing more boom, like more bass from the speakers. Once again, guys, I think the speakers on this thing, I don't know, they're, they're just better than the tap. Once again, we're sitting at around 120 FPS, maybe down to 117 at times, but still good. Oh, oh, <laughs> Dude, I gotta watch out. Oh, of course, bro, come on. All right, solid 120 so far. I mean, this is a huge deal. Like, look at that, insanely smooth. FPS is such a big deal for competitive games like this. Solid 120. Actually, sometimes I do see it go down a little bit. Yeah, sometimes it does go down to 90. It's at 113 right now, so it is not solid 120. It looks like for some reason in uh, Perf Dog, it's showing it almost always as 120, which is really weird. I don't know why it does that. For example, right now I'm looking at around 116, 114 FPS, but here it's almost always at 120, so I don't think we can rely on Perth Dog. Not sure what's going on with it, but yep, 108, 109. Still better than 60 though, but hey, oh, 90 right there. Interesting, it's not always solid 120. <laughs> you guys said that was clean, bro. <laughs> All right, there you go. That was an excellent gaming experience going at mostly 120 FPS. A lot of times it would go down to 115 when it would dip and it did go as low as 90, but of course that is all much better than being capped at 60 FPS like we had on the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. And now we finally have Genshin Impact, the game that you guys have been waiting for on the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. But before we do that, I wanna look over the results for Wild Rift. First of all, we had perfect 60 FPS on the tab, which is awesome, especially since the graphics were excellent. And unfortunately, for some reason, it was showing 120 FPS recorded on the iPad Pro, when in reality, the FPS counter showed below 120, like 115, 110, sometimes even as low as 90 FPS. So for some reason, this was not reliable. It was not as solid as this. All right, now that we're in game, let's go ahead and start that recording. Notice a little bit of glitchiness there. Let's go into the graphic settings and let's just turn it up as much as we can. So it looks like we're capped to 60 and everything else is turned on perfect. Wow, that is so beautiful and immersive. However, I am noticing some anti-aliasing, like it's just not that sharp looking at the details. Now looking over at the FPS counter, we are currently sitting at around, what is that, 5550? 50, How is it now? Oh, 40, 48 right there. So it's not solid 60 like it was on those other games. Let's do some flying and oh, 44. When you have all this stuff going on, it definitely dips down 40. And you do notice some stuttering, some glitching. Not all 30, is that 35? 
What is going on? Look, we're averaging around 40 right now and I could feel it. Oh. Now I don't feel the back of this thing heating up at all. This is a very large tablet, so it has a lot of chassis to disperse the heat, but I'm not happy with how much it stutters sometimes. Just random frame drops during gameplay. That's what I would call probably the most annoying thing while you're gaming is just to have like a glitch where it just stutters and the FPS just drops randomly. All right, with that said, Decent gameplay, very immersive display, but in this game we did get a lot of frame drops down to around 40, so that's not what you want to see if you're a Genshin Impact gamer. Let's move over to the iPad Pro. Here we are again in the graphics settings, and now, as you can see, the iPad Pro has a 120 FPS setting. That is so exciting and awesome for people who like to game on tablets and play Genshin and Woo! The difference is absolutely massive. I mean, that thing was stuttering, FPS was below 60 almost all the time, and it even went down to 40, but this right here, this is gonna be interesting. This time, it looks like the FPS is reacting correctly, like we just dipped down during that travel. Now we're looking at around 118. Already, I can see a massive di oh my goodness this is awesome a massive difference now that is what makes the ipad pro just so nice because you have awesome awesome software support allowing you to get 120 fps in a lot of games now i am noticing every once in a while it does drop the frame rate a little bit and it does have a little bit of a stutter but i think it's maintained over 60 the entire time which is very impressive because this thing i mean went down to 40. Boom! I'm happy with this, guys. I think I've seen everything I need to see. And there you guys go, that was Genshin Impact on both of these tablets. And before I show you guys the average FPS results for both of the tablets, I wanna show you guys the difference in brightness comparing Mini LED and the OLED, so watch this. There's that, and here it is, maxed out on this guy. Done. Done. And as you can see in the top camera, the iPad Pro is quite a bit brighter than the Tab S8 Ultra. And of course, you don't get all of these wavy PWM lines on the iPad Pro, but let's get to these results. First off, we have the Tab S8 Ultra clocking in 52.1 FPS average throughout that Genshin Impact test. You can see there's these frame drops right here all over the place, so that's very interesting. And then going down to the CPU usage, we're at 47.1 average CPU usage. Very interesting. And let's see the iPad Pro. Boom! 113.8 FPS average on the iPad Pro. That is absolutely insane. Basically, two times better. And you can see that you're not getting all those massive drops and issues like the other one was having going down the CPU. Oh my goodness, only 15.2% CPU usage. What? How does that even make sense? That's crazy compared to the uh, 47. So obviously the iPad Pro is a much better device for Genshin Impact. And now finally, let me give you guys my conclusions. First of all, the massive display on the tab is awesome. I'm sure it's great for media consumption and it's just so immersive in terms of the gameplay, but in some of the games, the actual display was so big that, I don't know, the scaling or something wasn't as good and I think the resolution is lower than the iPad Pro in terms of the pixels per inch, so the display isn't as high quality and of course you have the PWM lines that could annoy some people and also the speakers on the iPad Pro were better, more boomy in terms of the bass. Now in terms of the performance, if you're okay with just playing at 60 FPS, then the tab is fine for most games. You get the bigger display, which is very nice, but in Genshin, it couldn't even handle a solid 60. It went down to 40 many times for some reason. So if you want the best FPS, I mean like almost all of those games that we played gave us a 120 FPS option on the iPad Pro. That is absolutely amazing. And it was able to keep up with 120 in almost all the games. I think it was uh, Wild Rift where it went down to 90 at times, but still so much better than being locked to 60. So with all of that said, 
I'm honestly going to give the win to the iPad Pro. It is still the best gaming tablet out there, especially because of the 120 FPS. So hopefully you guys enjoy this gaming comparison. If you did, go ahead and click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one and check out our other comparisons right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.